Hey there, what's up everybody? This is your nutritionist on the go, Kamal Deep Singh Ojala from Erudite Nutrition. And now, finally, after discussing all those food groups, we come to the last but not the least important food groups that comes in our cooking and has a drastic effect on the blood sugar levels. That group is visible fats and oils. Okay. Let's recall a bit where I said that fats do not spike your blood glucose levels. This topic can be summed up on this statement alone. Fats do not spike your blood glucose level. That is plain and simple. But this is not that simple. Okay. Many factors have to be considered when we are talking about fats. All right. When I say fats do not trigger blood glucose, in response do not trigger insulin, in response do not trigger cortisol, in response do not trigger the inflammation, I mean by saying is that if we are consuming raw, cold processed, unrefined and chemical free, uncooked oil. Yes guys, you have heard me right. Uncooked oil. What is an uncooked oil? A type of oil, okay, a type of a visible fat which has not been either heated during the manufacturing process and you did not even heat it when you were cooking your food. Okay, now keep this fact aside and let's take an overlook on how we consume our oils. Almost all amount of oil and visible fats that we consume on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, majority of the oil is cooked oil. It has been heated, okay, because we use oil in our tadka, okay, that's where we use oil. Instead, where the oil should have been used was that not in the cooking process, you try to cook your food without oil and when you serve it and when you're going to eat it, add some raw uncooked oil on top of your vegetables or your pulses and lentils. But we do not do that. Okay, that is where we are wrong. Now, what happens when you cook the oil? What happens when you heat the oil? See, every oil gets denatured. Now, every oil has a different temperature when it gets denatured. That point is called the smoke point of the oil. Now, we are not going to go into detail about the smoke point, okay? But that means when you start to see the visible fumes that are being coming from your heated oil towards the, uh, towards the upward direction, that means you have heated your oil at or above the smoke point. Now the oil has started to break down. The, the beneficial compounds of your oil are breaking down. Okay, and they are turning into toxic substances which are called age. Now what this age does is basically these glycated end products uh, they spike your insulin and they spike your blood glucose levels. So that means if the oil is not cooked, that means it is not going to have any effect on your blood glucose level. But if it is cooked, it will increase your blood glucose levels. That's the statement which is the most important here. Now moving on to the oils from which we have to save ourselves and our family. All the refined oils, the saffola, the canola, the refined olive oil, the, the vanaspati hydrogenated oil, okay, then margarine, we call it neutralite in our country. All these oils, then apart from that, all the refined oils that are made from seeds like cotton seed and sunflower seed, if the oil is refined, okay, let it be olive or let it be any oil, if the oil is refined, 99% of the chances are that oil has been pre-cooked during the manufacturing process. Okay, for example, when you extract oil from seeds, to extract majority amount of oil from the seeds, they use so many chemicals, petrochemicals like hexane and sulfuric acid in a concentrated form and, and many other things to just to extract the oil from the seed cakes. And then the, the refined oil has an odor has a bad texture, has a bad flavor. To remove that odor, they add another set of chemicals. So refined oils are highly processed, 
highly so they are not suitable for human consumption i do not recommend the consumption of refined oils okay so we should stay away from all these refined oils these are bad for our health because they are pre-cooked even though they have a higher smoke point but what's the use when they are already cooked they already have the accumulated glycated end products now these companies will actually try to promote their product by saying that their oil has a higher temperature to withstand, uh, to withstand heat they have a higher smoke point but what is the use of that higher smoke point when the oil has already been burnt already been preheated and it already has those advanced glycation end products now coming down to the other side of the coin what oils do i suggest which oils are good oils see if they are not processed if they are not harmful chemicals and heat treatment used uh, in the in those oils so i would like to recommend cold pressed coconut oil olive oil uh, desi ghee from milk fat and then we can use flaxseed oil sesame seed oil all these oils which are coming from cold processing units okay because during the process the temperature is kept under control so that ages do not form now again and again i'm recommending you guys cold pressed oils because what happens is when when they try to extract the oil from any any particular product a lot of heat and friction is generated so in a cold processing unit the temperature is controlled and it is lowered below the smoke point of the particular oil so that the oil does not get burned up and we do not have these advanced glycation end products present in the oil one another simple fact in deciding if the oil is good for you or not just you know memorize the what kind of visible fats and oil advertisements do you see on the tv uh, you probably would not see a cold press coconut oil advertisement that i'm sure because i haven't uh, you will not see a cold press extra virgin olive oil ads too much on the tv whereas you will get uh, the refined olive oil advertisement to see a lot all right then you got a lot of advertisement for soy oils canola oils okay now in this exception desi ghee is just one exception which is you know very much uh, advertised on the television and it is actually uh, good for us so you can go for that and the best is the homemade ghee that is makkhan that is one of the absolutely best things that you should consume okay in your house and in fact you should make your own try to make your own ghee or makkhan at home so that will be the best quality of ghee makkhan that you can you know make by yourself now remember guys even though these oils are good coconut olive flaxseed uh, then we have sesame seed oils okay all these oils are good all these fats are good but if you heat them we get ages okay then and ages they just harm us they they injure our arteries they damage our arteries okay they raise our blood glucose level they spike cortisol they spike insulin they cause inflammation in our body okay now when we do not heat these oils the omega-3 fatty acids also are available to us because if we heat them our omega-3 fatty acids actually break down and we are in this uh, age of technology and this age of fast food culture and this age of where the majority of the people are living on an unhealthy diet and are sick we need omega-3 fatty acids we have a ton of omega-6 fatty acids already in our system but we need more omega-3 so majority of these good oils they have some good amount of omega-3 so try to use them in uh, in a raw form so guys now i just want to share with you guys some simple tips from where you can cut off your oil consumption which is the cooked uh, the broken down the spoiled oil which has a lot of ages in it and we have to stop its consumption and we switch uh, over to uh, the uncooked and raw oils which have all all the beneficial components still intact so when you're cooking a dal you soak it change its water and you put it into whichever cooking utensil you want to use now add the tomatoes add, add the onions okay add the garlic the ginger add all uh, turmeric and black pepper and all types of spices and salt and all those ingredients which you usually use in your tarka okay put all those stuff into the dal along with 
at the starting point and just cook it like that okay you will not have the need to add oil in the starting just boil the dal along with the tarka ingredients but do not use oil during the cooking process See, that's how you can save yourself from eating denatured and burnt oil through the dals now coming to the vegetable see the purpose of adding oil in vegetables is number one to circulate the proper heat while cooking okay and number two is that our tarka do not stick in the base of our utensils so we do not burn our vegetables See, these are the main two purposes so what we are going to do is I suggest for a 1 kg of raw vegetable that you are about to cook use only 1 tablespoon 10 grams okay 1 tablespoon of oil now you can use mustard oil also why I didn't mention mustard oil before is because much mustard oil has this bitter taste to it so it cannot be eaten in a in a raw form so rather mustard oil is a good oil so what we can do is uh, we can add the mustard oil in the tarka of a vegetable see it will not do any good to us but it will not even do too much of a harm to us so suppose you are making one kg of vegetable just add 10 grams of oil okay into your pan and try to use a non-stick pan okay now if you are too concerned about teflon then you can go for graphite non-stick pan so you can use any other pan which you can easily cook you have to regularly stir the vegetable so it doesn't get stuck and burn to the surface of uh, your utensil so once your tarka is prepared in one spoon of oil add the vegetables add all the spices and salt then add a glass a small glass of water into the utensil and cover it when you were using excess of oil just to cook your vegetables after your vegetables were cooked all the oil remained back in your utensil in your pan or in your karai and what does where does that oil go that all burnt oil goes inside of us so rather than that we are going to use a glass of water the, the water will heat up turn into steam cook our vegetables and after 12 to 15 minutes when your vegetable is cooked just Pick, uh, just uh, lift off the lid and all the water and the steam will evaporate you will get your vegetables that are perfectly cooked in a, in almost the same time that it used to cook but now you are using 95 percent less oil than you were used to suppose you are a family of five and you consume about three and a half to four liters of oil every month in your tarka, in your dal, and in your sabji. That means per family member, you are eating 800 ml of burnt oil. Now imagine what it's going to do to our body. Now when our oil is being heated in a tarka, 10% of the oil actually evaporates. And where does it go? It sticks to our walls of our kitchen, it sticks to the exhaust fan, it sticks to the chimney. Now we all know how we clean our chimneys and exhaust fan. We need hot water, we need dish soap, we need a, a steel scrub and then we need a lot of effort to clean that grease, that burnt oil from our exhaust or our chimney or from the walls of our kitchen that's only 10 percent of the oil that is being evaporated and sticking on your walls what about the 90 percent of oil that is burnt with, with your tarka and you are consuming it and your family is consuming it imagine what it is going to do to your body if the 10 percent oil is sticking on your tiles and you have to scrub it off with a lot of effort how are you going to clean the 90 percent of burnt oil that you are consuming every day okay a general question that i ask my patients is do you eat fried food and they say no we do not eat fried food once in a blue moon maybe once in three months or so they simply ignore the fact that the dal and the tarka is fried because we use excessive oil the sabji that we uh, that we cook is actually fried because there is so much oil being used compare your cauliflower sabji that you make at home compare it with the samosa almost similar situation excess of oil that is being heated and that heat heated up oil is actually cooking your food and your food is absorbing that oil that burnt oil that oil which will clog your arteries and which will also raise your blood glucose levels okay so we have to stop using the cooked oil and let's switch back to using raw oils all right make your dal without the tarka and cook your sabzi with minimum amount of oil now when you will use 
10 grams of oil in over 1 kg of vegetables, of cooked vegetables. Now, when the whole family is going to eat that 1 kg of vegetables, you know, 1 bowl each or 1.5 bowl each, how much oil, how much burnt oil are we getting? I guess not more than 1.5 ml. Whereas if you are a family of five and using five liters of oil every month, you are consuming 800 ml of burnt oil in a month. But if you use my technique, you will be limiting your consumption up to 25 to 30 ml of burnt oil per week that our body can handle with a good diet and with a good lifestyle. So guys, coming up to our last point now, how much oil should we eat? Now, let's go back uh, to another reference, okay, where I use this example. If you have just the diabetes, all right, nothing more. If you are only a diabetic patient and you have no other issue, then I suggest you need at least 30 to 40 ml. Okay, now that is six to eight teaspoons of visible, healthy, uncooked, and cold processed healthy omega-3 fats every day if you have a heart condition and you are a diabetic I suggest you keep your overall oil consumption even in the raw form to a lower end I suggest you go with 15 grams that is three teaspoons of oil in a day but this is not a benchmark guys this is not a benchmark okay if you want to know the exact amount of oil that you can consume as per your body needs and as per your health status you guys can contact me and we can discuss about everything and i will suggest you what is the best amount what is the right amount for you guys to consume visible fats on a daily basis guys a quick footnote i want to give you guys see coconut oil is expensive olive oil is expensive whereas the refined oils they are very very cheap so now if you are thinking that if you switch your oils to olive and coconut there will be a drastic imbalance in your financial budget because you are using expensive oils now that is not going to be the case even after using expensive oils you are going to save a lot of money why because you were using three four or five liters of oil every month that was a cheap, a low-priced refined oil, maybe 100 and 120 rupees per liter. But now, when we are measuring the proper amount of our oil intake in teaspoons, we are in a much more controlled manner. Okay, if you are, for example, if you are having 30 grams of oil, so that means a liter of oil. Now this is pretty much same to your old situation, but what the difference is, now you're putting so much more health into your body and removing and eradicating and avoiding the toxins that you used to put in your body imagine how much money you are going to save from your medical bills and your medicines okay so using these oils will not disrupt or imbalance or in any way harm your monthly financial budget in fact in the long run, when you live a healthy life, when your diabetes will be in control, you might not be in a need of medicine. This is actually going to save you a lot of money. And you know what my motto for my life is? Spend as much as money on your body and on your health. So guys, I hope this has cleared so many doubts in your mind and I hope you guys follow the advice. Start using raw oils and avoid all the pre-cooked and the cooked oils. And let's hope all this information that you have now through my videos is going to help you guys live a better disease-free life. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.